What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grant, you're watching Sub Urban Nerd. This is the channel where I give my nerd views on today's nerd news. First topic on a nerd rundown is Star Wars, like this, Star Wars fans are going cray over J.J. Abrams directing episode 9? I mean, it's kind of weird because I thought that was one of those things that everyone was kind of looking forward to, but apparently there's Star Wars fans that have started a petition at, uh, what was it, uh, change.org and they're making some crazy bold statements saying how they don't want JJ because he with the way he directed episode 7 that he's there's lacking in creativity there's no dive like you know which is kind of false because there's a lot of creativity there's a lot of diversity the first main the character is a female and then the second main character is a black man and then the third main character is I think he's Spanish so it's like what? So, I don't know what they're thinking, but I guess they're saying because it's a little bit too close to the way New Hope was, the way to start, but hey, he's bringing back a franchise after the whole fiasco of the prequels, and bringing it back to Grace, like, before that people weren't looking forward to Star Wars, and then this has brought, not this old, but new, and this the, basically, the, the people that signed these petitions they're like the minority, because they're trying to speak for all of Star Wars fans and saying basically that we deserve better and we demand better which who are you and on top of that how are you trying to get someone fired from this because JJ is you may have some problems like as far as that, that the CG monster going through the hall yes I had issues with that didn't like it and then there's some other things but overall the movie is good he did a good job and like I said before when I when they when I did the video about him coming back I believe that you learn from things. You learn from your mistakes. And I believe J.J. Abrams is that type of director. He listens. Because even he said that he realized some mistakes that he made in uh, Force Awakens. So if he's even admitting to that, you best believe he's going to take point And just make sure things don't end up like they did before. Even though they did end up pretty well. Because like I said, the franchise is, is flourishing. It... it it made one, it's the top grossing Star Wars movie of all time. So the dude had to have done something good. You know what I'm saying? So, as far as those people and their petition, fuck them. <laughs> Simple as that. Because you're not speaking for all us nerds. All us nerds don't want J.J. Because, we, we, and, and they're also speaking how like, oh, Star Wars promised us a new director for each, um, for each uh, movie. I'm like, yo, y'all talking out one side of your mouth and talk to the other. Because when, when, uh, when Colin Trevorrow said that when they when they that fiasco and he's not doing that, they wanted the the guy that directed the the Last Jedi, and he 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 would have been coming back. So you you're not going for a new director. Like you would have been fine with him, but in, in on top of that, he, the movie didn't even come out. So how are you trying to get someone and saying he's going to be better than JJ when the movie didn't even come out yet? So how are you going to judge that? But regardless of the fact. I'm st that's the end of that topic. Well, like I said, it doesn't really matter. They don't speak for us nerds. We it don't really matter. J.J. Abram, do your thing. Um, the next on the topic for the nerd rundown is there is a new poster, a movie poster for the new Tomb Raider movie that's starring Alicia Vikander. Now Alicia Vikander, she's starred in roles of um, Ex Machina is the one that I basically know her for. Which if you haven't seen it, you really check it out. It's really good. It's a really good movie. Slow burn, but it's a really good movie. Um, she's also been in the J the new Jason Bourne movie with Matt Damon, the Man from Uncle with uh, Henry Cavill and Army Hammer, I believe. And what's the other movie? Oh, The Danish Girl, which she actually won an award for. So she's a great actress, and she, I mean, they're basing this um, new Tomb Raider movie off of the video game reboot that just that came out like a couple years ago, and that game was is awesome. Uh, even the, the sequel, Rise of the Tomb Raider, like. It's it's a really good game, so this is good um, material that they're coming from, you know. The other ones were getting a little campy, whatever. Angelina Jolie, sure, she was beautiful for the time, and you know she she did her thing. I can't even remember what the movies were really about. I just remember Angelina Jolie looking sexy as hell in them. But <laughs> regardless of the fact, don't really care. But I'm definitely looking forward to this movie, especially if they're going off of what the Tomb Raider game was going for, because that was some grittiness, and it's basically an origin story of Lara Croft. So. It was really good, so I'm looking forward to the movie. Uh, next on a nerd rundown, oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is signed on to return to the Halloween franchise. Uh, she's going to be in a sequel slash reboot 
Um, it's due for a Halloween 2018 release. And the Blumhouse Productions announced Friday that she had, she had signed on. And the release date that they set for this is October 19, 2018, which is 40 years after the premiere of the original film. So to kind of go for that nostalgic thing, they, you know, it's always good to, if something came out. What was it? I think, I believe the, um, what was it, the Jurassic World. It came out on the anniversary. And so that's always good, you know, like... Uh, to to put out these movies on anniversaries of these things in 40 years didn't realize it was that long and Jamie Lee Curtis as old as she is she can still get it I mean like <laughs> I'm sorry but if all all y'all know so you have had to have seen the uh, the the beautiful role that she played in True Lies where she was stripping for Arnold yes that was good don't mean to sound like a perv but if no one knew how sexy Jamie Lee Curtis was until that movie, that movie made everyone realize how banging she was. And after that, I didn't see her the same. Every movie. I don't care what she was wearing. She just became like a sexual person. Like, uh, she was in Scream Queens. Which I sort of, I, I actually started watching that. And it was pretty good, but I don't know, I fell off after the season, mid-season finale coming back. I, for some reason, that happens with me with shows. But she's all, she's she's still beautiful. Um, she was, what was that, Heartbreakers? With, what's her name, um, Jennifer Love Hewitt? Yes, like she she's a beautiful woman, regardless of the age. I don't care how old she is, but she's still beautiful. But yeah, she signed on to come back, and I mean that's only good for the franchise. It, it I, doesn't bother me either way. I look forward to seeing her. Um, we'll see if the movie's good. It's supposed to be oh John Carpenter's returning as exec executive producer, and uh, the Pineapple Pineapple Express director David Gordon he's going to be directing this. So. It looks like it's in pretty good hands, so, you know, hopefully this movie come back. I think it's it's going to take place after the second one, Halloween, I believe. And it's, the other ones, they're not included, H2O. It's, I don't think they're even counting those, so we'll see how this turns out when you're just voiding, like, you know, like, like other movies, like, they don't exist. So we'll see how that's going to work out, but Jamie Lee Curry, Curtis is always good. Um, next, I'm going to talk about, oh, there was a Flatliners uh TV spot with uh, Kiefer Sutherland. He was actually an original. I don't believe it's a sequel. I believe he's just I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how this is, but he's in this movie too. There's an original Flatliners movie that came out in 1990 and he was in it. He was uh, playing the same role of, what's his name? Nelson Wright, uh, the professor. And this is basically a movie about some uh, teenage, um, no, medical students in college that are trying to test and see what's on what lies beyond death. And then they kind of get addicted to it because uh, from the trailers and whatever, it seemed like they just, their their senses getting heightened and they're more aware of their world. But then it just turns wrong or something, like stuff starts happening to their mind because, yeah, you're not supposed to die and come back. That, is, that shouldn't be a regular thing. And then they're doing it for longer periods of time. And there's brain damage, as I know, like after you die for a certain amount of time. So stretching it to five minutes to six minutes, yeah, that's going to definitely have some repercussions. But, hey, the movie looks kind of exciting, looks thrilling. So definitely look forward to seeing that. Uh, last thing we're going to talk about is the, the top five movies for the weekend. And of course, it is number one once again, of course. Like, they weren't getting dethroned. But yeah, they made $60 million, which is crazy because initially the first estimates for this movie were for $60 million. And then it jumped to 70 and then jumped to 90 I guessed like 110 and it ended up bringing in like 100 and, what, 120, $123 million opening weekend. Which killed. That's crushing it. So yeah, um, they only dropped about 50% in the box office um, in their 10 days for the weekend. And overall, domestically, they've made $218 million, which is just phenomenal. So it, keep killing it. And um, definitely look forward to the sequel. Uh, next and number two was American Assassin, which I put a review. I'm going to see if I can get a, um, uh, you know, a video. Uh, Notation up on the uh, on the right side on the left side, I guess um, Because I personally I like the movie it wasn't the best movie in the world But as far as what they're trying to do I definitely got the vibe and I liked it and I liked the main character um, Dylan O'Brien who you know, like I said as far as action hero I've seen it in Maze Runner. He's okay wasn't really behind him But like this kind of gritty thing I could definitely see more of these movies and I definitely want to see more of these movies with him No matter I don't care what anybody else is saying with the with these reviews for these move for this movie I liked it. I'd say go see it. Um, but it made fourteen point eight million dollars. The third uh, moving in third place is Mother, with Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem. Um, 
that one's getting a lot of mixed reviews. It's got like an F cinema score because I guess it's they they made it seem like it was going to be one movie when it turned out to be another type of movie. It's it's it they promoted it's like a horror thriller sort of the way they did um what's it called Crimson Peak movie, but it wasn't that. So it's it's more like a thought provoking movie and kind of like concept high concept. Which hey, if people are in that like if it's an independent movie and they're, they they promote it for that. That's what people are going to see. But if you promote it, it's like a horror flick, something to take your girl with, something that, you know, like you're going to enjoy. And then it turns out to be this movie that's a slow burner, this high, high concept. And you're like, what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? People are not going to come out of this movie happy. So they kind of they kind of fucked up on that. But uh, the movie made $7.5 million. And I don't know if it's going to make even that. Like, I doubt it's going to make that next weekend. It's probably going to drop down probably 50%. So it'll probably drop down to maybe like... Uh, three like four if they're lucky maybe three million but we'll see um next and fourth place is home again with reese with a spoon uh that movie's still chugging along made 5.333 million it dropped only like 38 percent from last week so hey they're still making that money um and then the last is hitman's bodyguard which i have another review for that um i was trying to try and see if i could put it into notations and that movie it made 3.5 55 million uh domestically it's made Seventy point three million, which I enjoyed it. You know, I just went in like stupid action explosions. You know, Ryan Ryan Reynolds and J, uh, you know Samuel L. Jackson. Yo, Samuel just knows how to play this funny asshole. So, hey, the movie was good. I liked it. So, like I said, check out the review for that that I put for this. But overall, that's uh, pretty much it for today's nerd rundown news. So remember this. Uh, Remember to subscribe. Remember, I'm going to put the notations, like, and remember, I'm Wes Grant. This is Suburban Nerd, and you've just been nerdified. See you tomorrow.